Welcome to Winning Strategies. This video series is a comprehensive and detailed guide to winning in Battlefield 4. It's not about getting more kills, or improving your KD, or scoring high. It's about how to win. In this video, we'll be focusing on the Conquest game mode on the Operation 2014 map, playing on the US side in the specific scenario of the Russian side having point B. Also, to narrow the scope of this video, I'm not going to talk about how to deal with enemies on the lower level. There are five paths for the US to get to B from their side of the map. The near escalators, the elevators, the far escalators, the stairs, and to the hallway. In this video, we will focus on just one of those paths, the stairs. The first thing we'll talk about is your choice of class. Each of the four classes can bring something to the table in this scenario, but some are better than others. My recommendation is to use the Assault class for the firepower. The M320 launcher is very powerful on this map, and with field upgrades you can spawn with an extra hand grenade. Deploying with the defibrillator is a good choice too, though in terms of field upgrades you will want to have that extra hand grenade for the firepower as opposed to choosing combat medic. Grenade type is up to you, but I prefer frag grenades for maximum blast radius and damage, and greater throw range than impacts. If you strongly prefer using another class, or assault is just not your thing, that's fine. Support players should spawn with the ammo box, and either the MPAPS or the airburst. Recon players should deploy with a spawn beacon. Engineers should deploy with their choice of rocket launcher and the EOD bot, which can be used for distraction. So, as mentioned, we will go over how to use the stairs to assault the B objective. This is my favorite out of the five paths to B, because I find it to be the most effective way to recapture B. First, let's talk about how to approach this path. There are three ways for you to get to the stairs. On the left of the subway train, through the subway train, or on the right of it. I would recommend avoiding the left side pathway, because there are a number of problems with it. On the left, you are open to attack from a number of directions, the opposite train track, the near escalator, the elevator doorway, and the far escalator. And also, because of the angle you're approaching the lower stair at, you are more susceptible to an enemy that is hiding up there, and who could drop down the stair and open fire on you with the advantage of surprise, or who could stay up there and have the advantage of higher ground. On top of all of this, you are splashing around in the water, which could alert enemies up in the stairwell of your approach. If you approach along the platform on the right, then it lets you see early whether there are enemies stationed on the floor between the two stairs. Snipers and DMR users like to position themselves here where they can enjoy a long sight line from this area. The track area can be covered by most primary weapons from this floor as well. If you see an enemy or a sniper scope glint, avoid engaging if you do not also have a long range weapon. Just duck into the train car and use it for cover to make your way to the stairs. You'll want to take out any support beams that are still in place, because having beams that are nearby you remain intact is an advantage to the opposition, not to you. They can be shot by the enemy while you're under or near the crumbling ceiling. If you're playing recon, around here is an okay spot to put down your spawn beacon. The main things to remember are to face your beacon forwards and to put it in a safe spot so that you and your squad mates won't be too vulnerable to attack right after spawning. Behind this pillar is good, as it provides cover, and it is protected by the wall from attacks on the left. There are two choices for coming up the lower stairs. Going to the left of the columns, or the right of the columns. It's up to you, but I've found that going on the right is slightly better, because opposition players tend to come down the upper stairs and aim on this side. From here, be ready to shoot enemies here and here. Now, as you go along this path, you are vulnerable to explosive spam from the Russian side. M320s, air bursts, frag rounds, and grenades, and sometimes even C4. Because this explosive spam is a little more likely to go to the right side of the wall, that actually makes the left side approach a little less damaging. However, this is where you support players come in. If you deploy with the MPAPS device, you can help your team cover ground along this path. Ideally, your team would want to have more than one APS in place. Good spots would be here, here, and here. This will protect you against the most common threats, which are the 320s and airbursts, but also the launchers of engineers. Unfortunately, you are still vulnerable to the 320 LVGs, hand grenades, and C4, because the APS doesn't deal with any of those. This brings us to the importance of knowing when to give up on a path. 
Strong enemy focus on one path means less focus on another path. If the explosive spam is too much and nobody's putting down APSs, then just don't use the stairs. Find which other paths have weaker defense and penetrate there. Standing on the upper stairs is the main position from where you'll be applying pressure to the defense, at least at first. You have two goals to achieve here, eliminate enemies and displace enemies. Killing enemies is obviously the preferred outcome, but you can still help your team win by getting enemies to abandon strong defensive positions. Doing so relieves pressure on entry points and makes it easier for your team to advance and claim the objective. It's important that you not be timid and tentative here at this main position. You've got to press forward, push the opposition back and gain ground. This applies in general to all conquest objectives in Metro. If you stay at the objective entrances, even if you kill every enemy in sight, if you don't move forward to start capturing the objective and don't move to take up defensive positions further forward, you're not doing enough to help your team to win. The other side is flag advantage, so by staying on the fringes of the objective area, you're just letting them respawn and repopulate the defensive positions, and your team is still bleeding tickets. So don't be cowardly around an objective. Be aggressive and make things happen. One of the first things I do once my team has gained the upper stairs is grenade the flagpole area. Assuming there aren't any enemies in the locker hallway on the right, this is relatively safe to do, as you aren't as, as exposed to enemy attack as you are during the other maneuvers I will talk about later in this video. So here's what you can do. The safer move is to throw from the stair steps without going all the way up the stairs, because that would expose too much of yourself. As you can see here, I retreat back down the steps after throwing so as to use the floor as cover. Normally, I'd go all the way down to be fully protected from bullets, but for the purposes of this video, I want to show you where the explosion is relative to the flag. That explosion takes care of enemies on the near side of the flag. To reach the far side of the flag, you have to expose yourself by coming all the way up the stairs, like this. Again, I would normally take cover after throwing, either back down the stairs or hugging the wall, but I want to show you that the explosion of the second grenade is over there on the other side of the flag. Here's what the flag area looks like from the defender's perspective. This is one defensive position which lets you use the corner for cover. As you can see, a grenade that goes off here on this side of the flag would be lethal for anyone in this position. There are two other Russian defensive positions near this flag area. Here at this corner, and here between these vending machines. A grenade placed here on this other side of the flag would kill anyone standing in between the vending machines and possibly also be lethal to someone at the corner. As mentioned before, in addition to killing enemies, displacing them is also effective. Grenades have a special quality in that there is no defense against them except to get out of the blast radius or behind sufficient cover. After grenading the flagpole area, what I usually do is kill, displace, or pressure any enemy sitting on the other side of this wall in locker hallway. If I have a grenade, I'll throw it like so, bouncing it off the wall. This flushes anyone near the doorway and keeps that area clear for at least a few seconds. After that, you have two options. Either you can rush the locker hallway, or you can try to post up against this wall and clear enemies from there. First, let's go through the post up option. Now that you've gained the top of the stairs, there are roughly four main areas from which the Russian side can attack you. The elevator area, the flagpole area, the far side, and the locker hallway corner. We've already gone over how to deal with the flagpole area. Of course, you can still use a gun to engage defenders at the flagpole. However, they will have a slight advantage because they will most likely already be aiming at the stairs and holding the angle. Next, let's go over attacking the far positions. You can hit the far wall with an M320HE from the stair steps without fully exposing yourself. In this video, I'm walking all the way up so you can see the impact point and clearly understand what defensive position that is being assaulted. You can also hit this other far wall where players sometimes try to position themselves. From the top of the stairs, using a launcher, you can basically take out enemies that are along any part of these walls. In this video, I'm using the M320HE of the assault class, but other launchers are just as effective whether engineer launchers or the support class's airburst. Of course, if you have a mid or long range scope on your primary, go for it. Use that too if you want. Next, let's talk about assaulting the elevator area. You want to do so from this right side position, up against the wall, rather than any other part of the top of the stairs, because the wall gives you cover from counterattack coming from the defensive positions around the far wall, the far escalator, the turnstiles, and the ticket booth. It's certainly possible to shoot from the left side of the stairs, but just know that it is riskier because there are more enemy sight lines covering that area. So, from here you can open fire on most parts of the elevator area. You can also use a launcher on enemies positioned near the far wall or corner. One spot that gunfire cannot reach from the stairs is the area behind the photo booth. 
From here, you can defend against assaults from the escalators and elevators, and you can use the corner as cover to defend against approaches from the stairs. So, from the US perspective, we want to be able to deal with this threat. Consider this part of the ceiling. As you can see, it is almost directly above the photo booth. You can target the spot with a launcher and damage an enemy hiding behind the photo booth or in the corner. Also, don't forget about grenades, which can be thrown to flush that position. Finally, let's talk about clearing the locker hallway. After gaining the top of the stairs, the locker hallway becomes the most important position to acquire in this assault strategy. You'll see why soon enough. To take the locker hallway, begin by training your sights on the doorway. You first need to deal with any enemies that are right at the doorway, who could strafe out and open fire with the advantages of surprise and peeker's advantage. So pre-fire the doorway, and hold a moment to prepare for enemies to appear. If your senses don't tell you that there's anyone near that doorway, then it's a good idea to follow with a grenade as I showed you already. Pressure the defense there, and get them to abandon this area here, the immediate vicinity of the doorway. Then follow your grenade in, and take care of any tangles. Another tactic is to throw back-to-back -back grenades for increased flushing power. Now, enemies will most commonly be near the wall and lockers. Rush in and pre-fire to get the jump on them. Sometimes players will be prone though, instead of standing. Be ready for that. Another consideration is that defending players can use this corner to strafe and peek. Be ready for that too. Use your pie slicing skills. Use pre-firing. Sometimes an enemy will be positioned here. This locker provides enough cover that you can't shoot him, so use grenade if you have one. Now, to make the best use of the locker hallway in your assault of point B, it's ideal to clear all the way to the far end of it. In addition to that first defensive position I told you about in here, there's another similar one just a bit further down the hall. Enemies can also be stationed at various positions at the far end of the hall, including on the other side of the doorway straight ahead. If you don't deal with them, you leave yourself open to flanking from that direction, not to mention explosive ordnance, which we'll talk about in a minute. So how do you deal with them? There are a few things you can do. You can strafe or peek to see what threats are down there. You can pre-fire down the hall. You can use your launchers. However, this corner where we're at is extremely vulnerable to launchers coming from down the hall. So this is where the MP APS comes in again. Once the APS is in place and doing its job, you or your team can strafe and peek or even take up position behind it, either upright or prone, perhaps with a bipod. Just remember that the APS takes damage from gunfire and can be destroyed. That being the case, it's a good idea for support players to keep an ammo box on the ground so that an APS can be repeatedly redeployed. One tip. You can deploy the APS by moving like this, facing down the hallway, and then the APS is already facing where it needs to be. But it's safer if you deploy the APS sideways or diagonally, so you can use the corner for full cover from gunfire. The APS can be aimed after being deployed. Putting an APS here is also a decent idea, to protect against projectiles coming from the main area of Objective B. This is also a decent spot for the APS to protect Locker Hallway. Let's assume now that the US side of Locker Hallway is clear. Hopefully, you have at least one teammate defending against Russian approaches from their end. If not, well then you just have to act quickly to do what damage you can before you get flanked from that end of the hallway. There's a nice corner here which provides you with good cover by way of this wall on this side and these containers on this side. While you do your work, there are a couple of likely threats. Projectiles coming in from the doorway and enemies rushing the doorway. An APS will protect you from most explosives. So from this position, you can clear enemies all along this line of sight, including the flagpole area and whoever might be in that far corner. Enemies could also be behind the elevators and use this corner for peeking to engage you. You also have a line of sight to a lot of the area in front of the elevators, with a short section of wall between the two doorways available as cover that you can use when engaging. Ideally, the elevator area will have been cleared before you've arrived at Locker Hallway by US pressure from both the stairs and the near escalators, but you can clean up any remaining opposition from here. Hopefully, your teammates are aggressive enough that they have pushed forward by now to secure the elevator area. The final phase of retaking B using the stairs pathway involves clearing out the rest of the actual objective area, meaning all this floor area, the far area behind the counter, and then, ultimately, the small patches of floor behind the plants, where the Russian side is able to contest the capture. 
Once you and your team have cleared away all opposition in this area, the US side must push forward to take up position at the flagpole area and the rest of the actual capture area of B. As I mentioned before, you've got to maneuver aggressively in conquest. You can't just sit back and not take initiative to gain ground. That applies to this point in the strategy as well. Just because you've cleared out every enemy in your lines of sight from the locker hallway doesn't mean you're done. You've got to move ahead from there to take up defensive positions to prevent the Russian side from retaking B themselves. Often, my preference is to sprint and bunny hop over to the flagpole area and then go prone to take cover. And then get up and take stock of enemy positions that I can see from here. Other options are moving behind the near plants or, if it's safe enough, moving all the way up to this corner with the ATM machines. At this point, congratulations, you have successfully retaken B. Let's summarize the overall strategy for taking B as the US side on Operation Metro Conquest. Go to the stairs. Take position on the upper stairs. Grenade the flagpole. Use launchers on the far wall. Clear or soften the elevator area. Clear the near locker hallway. Clear the middle of locker hallway. Clear any remaining enemies at the elevator area. Clear the flagpole area and far corner. Clear the far wall. Clear the capture area of B. And then move to defend B. So there you have it. A comprehensive strategy for retaking B as the US side on Metro. I know it was a bit long, but I wanted to cover a lot of details so as to give you all a better chance of winning especially if you're going to be on my team. Let me know what you think of this video, or the whole video series, by commenting below. And of course, I'd appreciate it if you clicked subscribe. You can also be found on Reddit if you want to reach out with a DM or comment on my posts.